Well, it's, it's really a pleasure to be back. Thank you, Dr. Mastin and all the other faculty who are responsible for suggesting to me that I come back and do this. It's a, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, we've had the opportunity as Dorsey Company to actually work for Michigan State University, but this is more important to me uh, because I remember sitting in the same seats that you did, and uh, I believe I might be able to shed a little light on the things that you're going to find when you get outside. It's, you know, from a technique standpoint, I think all of you are probably more advanced in the latest techniques than I am. Uh, and I'll explain how that has happened and what it's meant to my career. So we're going to talk about um, the differences you're going to find in the marketing profession where the things you've learned in advertising and public relations and the management of those techniques are going to be applied. Uh, you're part of a bigger system, uh, but you have an unusual perspective that I think is going to let you move around in that system more effectively than many other disciplines. What you've learned here is extraordinarily powerful. But it's important to know the difference between capital M and lowercase m. Well, one of the things you get here at Michigan State is you're getting leading edge insight on techniques. And of course, that's not to suggest that the way these things get applied, you don't understand. Uh, but the fact of the matter is there's a tremendous range of ways and means that people go about trying to practice advertising and public relations. Uh, you're going to find that the terminology that you've used and have all become your common language, speaking to each other uh, in between uh, your courses, with friends who are studying the same thing, with your instructors. When you get out into the broader world, that's not necessarily going to be the case. Uh, every term you have is going to have 10 definitions. Uh, every application is going to have some different ways to go about it. So, we're not only talking about capital M and lowercase, we're talking about technology or techniques and application. So right now, my opinion is that you're really strong on the technique side because of where you've had your education and the reputation the school has and my experience being a graduate from it. What we're going to find out though is there are a lot of ways to apply these techniques. How many people here play golf? Come on, hands, let me see. This way I'll understand where my analogy is making a sense. Okay, so less than 20% of you. All right, so in golf, you have a course. Each hole is laid out differently, different terrain, traps, different lengths of grass at various places on the course. And while my uh, illustration doesn't show it, there are 13 or 14 clubs in every golf bag. And you know what? Every single one of them is effective. Every single one is really good. So how do you know which one to use? It's the same kind of question that you're going to face a thousand times. You don't have any shortage of methods, techniques, tools, tactics. The question is, what do you pick? How do you use it? How frequently? How heavily? How much do you rely on it? Well, in golf, you have that same challenge. So when you get to the hole, particularly after the first uh, tee off, but even at the tee, the first swing, the issue is, what's the course? What's it like? What's the weather like? Where are you on the course? And when I say where, I mean each hole you expect to take between one, if you're really great, and maybe six strokes to get the ball in a little cup. So as you move along, the course is changing. And I think that's a really apt analogy uh, for the problems and opportunities that are going to be solved uh, through the discipline of advertising and public relations. So you actually have to go then further to take a look at who is swinging the club. So the golfers in the room know that. If I'm 150 yards away from the cup and I've got a straight shot, I'm going to use a 7-iron, but some others are going to use a 6. Some others are going to use an 8, or maybe even a 9. Different movement on the ball, so you make it go to a different distance. And 
court, my ability to swing the club has a lot to do with the flight of that ball, too. Well, this combination of variables is going to be before you. And uh, this is actually going to help define where you land in the landscape of marketing. I'm going to take the opportunity here to digress a little bit and talk about some of my experience. Um, on the landing, you know, I'm sure, how many of you are looking to go to a big agency? How many are interested in working for a smaller creative boutique or working independently? Anybody else? How about on the PR side? Major agency? How about corporate? Those of you who haven't raised your hand, I'd like somebody to tell me what you want to do with your degree. Go ahead. Okay, sports management. And of course, there's a huge communications role in that, and it's increasing all the time. How about this one, Yoli? Not sure yet. Okay, that's fine. Who else wants to volunteer? I want to hear something different that you think you might like to do. Right here. This young lady? Yes. Agency. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Well, when you land there, <clears throat> your first job is, you know, not going to be to take over the world or to save the account. It's going to be to figure out how to work with these people in your immediate team, uh, because that's going to define your world and it's going to largely define the value you can deliver uh, to the team. That's where you have to deliver value first uh, to your company and to the extent that you're working for an agency, to your client, and ultimately to project that out to whoever they're trying to target. So you're going through a number of different parties, different points of view, to get to the end state that you want to, which is to influence the end user or their influencers to get them to do something. When I got out of school, I was lucky. I went right to J. Walter Thompson in Chicago. And as an assistant account executive, uh, I was on the Gillette account. And we had all kinds of things. We handled every single product for Gillette marketed to the US military in Europe and the Pacific. We had the Gillette Safety Razor Division. So we had every single blade and razor that they sold, including responsibility for developing new products, which back at the time included the double razor technology that you see in uh, almost every shave razor today. But then it was brand new. And some of these were in test market. So that was part of the initial work. Then there was other new products on things like Cricut a disposable lighter. I don't even know if it's sold today. Uh, and experimental products like calculators and digital watches. All of this at one time. So that meant that my account group, there were maybe five of us, had to work with a different creative team, a different media planning group, a different research group, uh, different producers, to have the material made. Of course, each of those campaigns had uh, different budgets, uh, different media channels, different frequency, and obviously different goals that we're trying to accomplish. So it was very important for me to get to know the people. And I wound up spending a ton of time with the other groups in creative, in research. Not, not assigned time. I'm talking about spending time to get to know the people who were there and build a rapport. Because, of course, this next thing that I want to mention, they already knew. Uh, and that's what the process was there. They knew the process. I didn't know the process. Getting to know it with these people who I had to work with every day was crucial. And what happened in the course of 18 months is that essentially I got incorporated completely into the process, and my learning rate was greatly accelerated. You may remember I told you that a lot of these products were in test 
and some were really older products who were still just milking the sales out of them, so they didn't have a lot of advertising support. But that range of application, that variation in the management technique, the difference in what the goal was we were trying to accomplish was facilitated because of the time I spent with the people and understanding the process that we used. But, you know, that wasn't the only thing. I had to fit in there. It wasn't just knowing something about advertising, management, the tools that one would use with it. That was okay. Those were table stakes, if you will. Those of you who are poker players understand you have to ante up. Well, you had to have that. But you had to have more than that. You had to learn how to fit in because that was the only way to add value. These people had a process already. They weren't waiting for me. They won't be waiting for you necessarily to tell them how to get it done. And so by learning what was close to me helped me. And you might think that this fourth item, it says learn the team and company or organizational goals is an interesting place to be last. Well, the fact of the matter is it's going to take a while to figure that out, particularly if you're on the agency side, because your group, your team, your account team, they've got a goal. They've got some goals, things that they want to get done to advance themselves, to advance their stature within the agency, uh, to be selected for better accounts, et cetera, et cetera. So that team has a goal. And of course, uh, the agency has a goal with regard to the products that they're building for the client to use. And of course, those have some goals that the client hopes to achieve with it. And then, of course, there's this in use that the target audience is going to make of your messages. And so there's a goal there, too. Well, you're going to want to filter this initial experience through all of those things. But you can't stop there. Because this was your landing zone, and the issue is where do you want to end up? And if there's one warning that I can give, or one piece of advice, that is not to become too settled in doing the same thing. I'm not suggesting that you change jobs furiously, but as I was introduced, this gentleman over here, Stanley Takas, uh, is a reminder to me that the people you meet, in fact, probably people in this room are going to wind up being influential to your career from now on. And one of the ways that they can help you figure out where you want to end up is that as you go out and take on these initial roles in sports management, in agencies, working in small agencies, maybe working for small retail organizations, or someplace on Madison Avenue, or in some technology startup, or in a giant technology established company, don't lose touch. Find out what your colleagues are doing, how they're answering the same questions, how they're solving the same problems, how they're milking out the behavior that you want from your audience. Because, to my earlier point, all the tactics are good. The issue is, where are you? How are you going to use it? Who's using it? And so you want to develop that perspective on how these things are done. And if you wait until you find another job, or if you simply read the trades and bore into the discipline and the application that you're making, the industry that you're working on, unless you have some unusual opportunity, and that's what I had when I got out, to work on all of those products immediately, different budgets, different targets, different goals, different life stages of the product, you're not going to see as much. And so you want to see as much as you can, as early as you can, not by changing jobs every month, but by studying and talking with your colleagues. And today it's a lot easier for you to find other colleagues via the internet. You can be on discussion boards, discussion groups, and learn how the same problem Solve someplace else, another place, another place, another place. Now, another example of how that 
worked out for me. Where do you want to end up? Well, you, you might not even know. I didn't. I, I thought I wanted to go to work for a big ad agency and be in account management. And, you know, was, I was the most surprised person in the world uh, to get out here and go to J. Walter Thompson in Chicago. That was their largest office then. And uh, that was a big opportunity. In fact, it was an over 500 man office there on Michigan Avenue. But that was, uh, turned out to be a short term because I was really eager to learn more. What had happened in a very short time was to see all of these different things, old products, new products, promotional products, products that you're milking for all the sales that they can finally give you, trying to persuade the client to reintroduce advertising on some that have been uh, terminated from advertising because the users are just going to keep buying them. At a certain point, some products don't even need it. So that early exposure led me to a desire to expand my perspective. And I moved down the street to a place called Burrell Advertising, where our focus was not nearly as broad. Burrell, as many of you know, was an agency and still is dedicated to communicating to the black consumer market. And there, I was their first professionally trained account executive. And the account was McDonald's. And in a very short time, it was evident to McDonald's that they wanted me to work for them. And so I only stayed at Burrell for six months. But in that short period of time, I'm going to tell you something now that will seem a little bit strange. You know, we only had, you know, three for television networks at the time and local TV. At the time I got there, our advertising directed to the black consumer market was limited to cities and markets where the population was significant. But it seemed to me that there was an opportunity to put this on network TV. But I had to prove the case. And one of the other things that I'm going to say to you is that you want to in my opinion, understand the procedures of research, analysis, and the application of that data. And try not to get narrowly focused merely on the research that drives messaging, but understand that you're part of a bigger process of marketing. It's all subject to measurement. I'm not talking about measuring 20 things. I'm talking about understanding three or four that really talk about you gaining traction with the market, something you can see early that you know points directly and without very much question to the end result that you want. Well, we, or not, the commercials that have been produced directed to the African American market turned out to be even more effective when positioned to something called the general market. The last time I said that, you helped me remember that there was no such thing as the general market, and you were right. I'll come back to that later. But the point I want to, to make now about that experience was that with that research, we moved that advertising from being used in spot markets here and there across the country to the network television lo rotation, and we doubled the budget at Burrell in six months. I didn't get to see the rest of it because I was hired away by McDonald's. And now suddenly you're in a whole new place. Fortunately, I had been working on things that showed me a lot of different situations because here now, 24 months out of Michigan State, I'm out of packaged goods, out of the big agency, been to a small one, and now I'm working at a place where after you put your national marketing plan together, the owner-operators of the restaurant get to vote on it. That's a completely different environment and part of the chain through which you're going to deliver the value of all the techniques that you've learned thus far. It won't often be you'll have the idea, you'll have the means and the control and the authority to implement it. There's this whole chain of things that are going to happen. And so that was an example to me of how all that work in new products and testing back at J. Walter Thompson 
had application because lo and behold, you know, every few months or so you'll notice McDonald's or Burger King, one of these people is having a new sales promotion. Well, I'll tell you what, they're working on that two years ahead of time. And at McDonald's, every single one of those promotions you ever saw, you know, Happy Meal or a premium or two for this or a limited time sandwich, every single one of those was subjected to laboratory testing where they weren't really in the store and to in-market testing, multiple markets, so we knew what we were going to get ahead of time. Had it not been for the happenstance of working on all these new products at Gillette, I would have been over my head. But as it turned out, I was able to participate. Fortunately, I'd spent all that time down with the uh, production. So, out at McDonald's, we had something called a shooting store on a turntable in LA, so it could always turn to the sun, the greens and stationary items could be moved around. Again, hadn't done it quite at that level, but it's something I could participate in. So going back to my comment about other places and learning about them, it's critical to do so when new opportunities come to you, when they pop up, you'll have the opportunity uh, to, yes, yeah, say you're gonna raise your hand and say, sure, I wanna try it, but you're gonna right away have an opportunity to make a difference. Okay, so back when I was going to school here, we used to talk about the four Ps. You guys probably still hear about that every now and then, but things have happened since then. So some people have come up with as many as 14. Doesn't really matter. What matters is Every one of them is going to be important, and you fit into this thing called marketing. You're down here in this little box down here, this little brown box. See, the brown and orange have an arrow that come from them because that's the tip of the spear. That's where you guys are. And this is a place where there is tremendous value. You are working in a place where you see the market's response. When I say the market, I'm talking about who you're talking to and those peripheral to them. Could be employees that you need to address. Could be regulators that you need to address. Could be people who are influential to the buyer. Sometimes the buyer and the user aren't even the same. So there's a lot of things going on, but you are addressing them and you get to see the reaction. The skills that you have amassed with regard to messages to elicit a response are exactly the things that you're going to need to understand the environment in which you work. That's a market too. You're trying to learn it, you're trying to penetrate it. You want to be a part of it, and it'll only happen if you study it. Problem is, though, This doesn't mean the same thing every place. Well, then they are starting to ask. Does it fit the need? Does it fit perceptually? Does it fit financially? Does it fit socially? Does it fit politically? This is before, long before anybody is thinking about advertising, if in fact the discipline is being directed in the right way. I would just say to you that my experience with Dave Walter Compton was kind of unusual in another way too, because we were at a granular level. I had first-hand involvement in research that was doing things like designing the cases of digital watches, designing packaging, figuring out where in the store we might change the distribution for uh, some of the feminine shaving products, uh, one of which we were testing is still in the market today called Daisy, Gillette's first disposable shaving system. But the point of the discussion is that that work 
was right at the beginning of the marketing process before we had any thought about the advertising. So we were lucky, I was lucky, to work on something that started out way over here on this side. But you, you might be over here. You might be on this side. And over here, you're not going to have uh, been involved with all this other stuff. You're just going to be handed a product or a service and told to go out and sell. I guarantee that's going to happen to someone. We need to sell this. Can you guys come up with something? And it's a little different, but they're going to expect that you have the ability to participate. They're going to be using all the same terms, except they'll mean something completely different because over here, the enterprise either is myopic, they're funded differently, they may have an erroneous perception that they don't have competition. You're going to hear that a lot as you get here, oh, we don't have any competition. That's not true. If you're not winning, I'll tell you something that we say to our client, whether it's a real competitor or not, doesn't matter. If you didn't make your goal, you lost. And your job and our job at Nursing Company is to prevent that. So that's by whatever means you can find, and usually that's found by looking into the data. So you're going to fall somewhere in between these, these spots. <coughs> the fact of the matter is that in between this capital M and the lowercase m, you're going to fall. Take you back to an earlier slide where it said you cannot be satisfied with what you find there. I don't care how exciting it is, or involving it may be, or how it stimulates your curiosity or imagination. It's vital for you to figure out how you can apply what you've learned all across this continuum. That way, you move from knowledge to wisdom. We move from application, from techniques to application, and you start to recognize something that's in the name of the school, art and science. They're both there. You have these dichotomies that you're working with. There's six, so somebody else might say there's more. But the issue is that your challenge is to blend these things so that there's an answer. Now, I want you to notice here, on this side, Everybody's working to the goal, but on the right side with that lowercase m, yeah, there's, there's been no involvement. You, you're really, again, handed something to sell. You're close to the market. You're reading the questions of your client, the questions of your boss, the questions of the owner of the company is going to be our sales. They may not have a lot of consideration for the things that you measure or consider as you're developing the campaign, whether it's an advertising or public relations or uh, some uh, video series that's intended to engage. They, they might not have any interest in all those subordinate techniques, ways and means that you did it. They're looking at the end. They're looking at the number. Plus, I have a dollar sign down at the bottom instead of an X. And again, if you go back to my earlier slides that talk about the people, their process, your role, and the goal, you'll be better able to adjust to this world that's got this level of dimension. this or not, I think it's pretty important. Both ends of the spectrum, all the people there are going to think they're doing marketing. Both ends. Oh yeah, we're doing marketing, yeah, we do that, we do that, we do that. And you're going to have to fit in. I just uh, have uh, a tremendous desire for you to understand the variety of things that you're going to find that are called marketing, advertising, public relations. Learning here is going to require that 
that you understand the dynamics of that dimension. And it's really the people and how they do it there. Then you can add a new idea. So you know the story. So, you know, you, you wind up in Jay Walter and you're sitting in the pub, you've been there six months, and you're a member of the account team, you're an assistant account executive. And so they're talking about something that at the time I knew about, because I'd learned it here. I went to Michigan State. They were talking about position. Believe it or not, Michigan Avenue, 27th floor, the Hancock building at J. Walter Thompson, from the management supervisor down on the Gillette account, they weren't sure just what that meant. I'm sitting there wondering whether I should say anything. I did. Believe it or not, the just came up and I started writing. And it was only by being patient, by having spent time to build some credibility for meeting the people, understanding what they did, understanding the process, that I got that level of consideration. But there's going to be times when you won't get the consideration either. So, I want to tell you another story. And this one's a little bit disheartening. So, this is still the Thompson story. So, things are going pretty well. We've got all these products at Gillette. Remember I told you, it's personal care products, safety razor products, new products in electronics, new products in plant care. Somebody says, boy, you know, we better do a profile of the consumer electronics market. Julius, that will be a great one for you to do. Terrified. Absolutely terrified. Unfortunately, we did have a business library with two librarians, uh, one of whom has been a candidate for the library uh, of the uh, Congress of the United States, the Library of Congress here. So these were high-level library scientists, but they couldn't do the analysis for me. They just buried me in information which back in those days came on pieces of paper. So for the next two months, I probably didn't leave work until about 10.30 at night. I finally produced a report that went right to the top of Gillette. Turned out, it was made a source material at every office of J. Walter Thompson in the world. So, when Bill Salatich, then the president of Gillette North America, came in for the agency review that year, and the report was going to be part of the topic, I was sure I was going to be able to go to that year. There was no doubt. I had done all the work. I knew it. I knew it cold by this time. I mean, you know, at 10.30 at night for eight weeks, and you start to pick up things. Didn't get to go. Didn't get to go. I was told, watch from the control room, back there. There was a little guy back there named Billy Hay. Billy was our uh, AV controller. We had a situation where that room actually controlled six of these type conferences that could be going on simultaneously. And he could see that I was really, I was low and angry. It happened to be the night of the Christmas party, too. He said, look, calm down. He said, you can't do anything but hurt yourself right now. And fortunately, as part of you know visiting these other departments and getting to know the, the folks who didn't have to wear a suit every day, who were more open in the way that they exchange information than some of what we used to call us guys in the account side, the suits. I actually listened to them. At the Christmas party, Bill Salatich was there in the 95th floor of the Hancock building. He came up to me and said, who's Julie Schwartz here? You made that, you did that report for us, I just want you to know how great you think it is. If I hadn't been forgotten, Long story short, when I went to Burrell, I engineered a pitch to direct for the Burrell Advertising Company by calling up Mr. Salvatore. So you might feel bad about something that's going to happen. You might feel overlooked about something that happened. But the fact of the matter is, if you've done those things 
I mentioned at first. People. Process there. What your role is and the goal. And figure out how they do it someplace else. When the opportunity comes up, you're going to be ready. So I'm going to stop here and ask you whether or not you have any questions or comments. You may notice that I didn't talk about digital, I didn't talk about film, I didn't talk about copywriting and all that. Uh, and I, you might be surprised to find that after about 10 years, that was not a real big part of my world because moving over to the client side uh, and forming this company, our job now is competitive and marketing strategy. Typically, when we get called, somebody's made a mistake, or there's a problem that they can't, or don't believe they fully exploited, or there's a question. And our job is to come in and figure that out, and uh, when we're done, we leave. And believe it or not, this is year 32, we have not done the same thing twice. We have not recommended the same thing to the client that we've recommended to another, because it wouldn't have fit each circumstance is absolutely unique. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to do that that well had I not started here to understand how the tip of the spear works, how we have to get a reaction from, and later you can't put it to me, our co-workers. We have to interact with the process. We have to interact with the client. We have to interact with the market. The things you have learned put you in a better position to do that than any other business major I can think of. So, uh, with that, I'd love to hear what you think about what I said or answer any questions that you might have. By the way, advertising is not a place for people who are shy. Uh, you're going to be sitting around a table in a creative meeting or something like that. And if you don't speak up, shame on you. Stand up. say it was my work at McDonald's uh, because I came here as ad promotion supervisor in what was adult market. It had something called kid and adult. Ronald and adult. I worked on the adult side. And when they hired me, remember I came from Borelli, they said, well, gee, Julius, you come over here and run our, our black marketing program. I said, well, you know, being black is the accident of birth. And, you know, if you're not good at marketing, it doesn't matter whether you're black, you're not going to be able to help this out or not. She said, I'm going to need to have a portfolio responsibility, just like the other two national marketing managers that were there. They said, okay. So here's what happened. I got to handle all of the material, every 
every item that was necessary going to this particular segment, black consumer market. Whether I was working on the product or not, the way it was set up, you had Big Mac dish, you had filet of fish, the southern person had quarter pounders, and you're working on the campaign for this year and doing tests for the following year. That let me be involved in every single product and every single campaign. To the extent that, on top of that, national responsibility for some of the calendar, about a third of it, all of the black advertising, they gave me the Spanish, at the time, consumer market. I studied Spanish for seven years. I probably knew about five words. I did enough to pass it at the time, but I was not fluent in Spanish. But when you have learned those things I did in the background, I had the tools available to interrogate the process and understand it. So, by far, McDonald's was the most fun, particularly when we got to testing breakfast and launching a brand new product. Ditto with the chicken, McNuggets, and the crib. Those were all my responsibility <coughs> personally in test markets and in national rollout, and I never had too much fun in my life. Um, at McDonald's, the other thing that you would want to remember is when we were doing some of these TV commercials, we're talking about in the 70s and early 80s, some of these spots we were spending $300,000 on. So we had top level film production, uh, post production, uh, music recorded specifically, uh, and you're sitting there watching. I mean, we were using techniques that aren't even in existence. Now. We were shooting on 35 millimeter film, editing on something called a Kim, which is a German uh, piece of machinery uh, to edit this. Uh, fascinating. So no doubt McDonald's was um, the most exciting job. The best experience, though, has been working for myself the last 32 years. There's no doubt about that. There's not one day that I got up in the last 32 years and said, damn, I gotta go to work. Not one day. I call it psychic income. And if you're not getting it, you're being underpaid. Other questions? Okay, here, right here. We decided together. You understand that? You know, if you're real good at your work, you're gonna you're gonna anger some people too. And uh, I'll tell you another story. My boss there was a guy named Stan McCon. And he was my friend. And he told me something. He said, he's the only person that I work with that called me by my nickname, it's Skip. He said, Skip, you know what? Uh, you think the other guys here are on your team. He said, but they're not. They're, they're on their team. You're working for the Golden Arches. You're trying to fly the flag and get the job done. They're not doing that so much. He said, you're running in front of your headlights, which means you can't see the road ahead. He was right. And so there were some mistakes made, too. Some, some ideas that you could be more candid than maybe it was a good idea to be. One of the things that happened to you in new product marketing is that you met with the chairman of the board and his direct reports every quarter to go over the details. So you had the business in your head. Well, one of my brilliant ideas was to avoid going to Hamburger University. Why in the world did I need to know how to cook a hamburger? Of course, at some point, Fred Turner said, well, Julius, you know, if you had more ketchup in your veins, you'd know how to do this. Unfortunately, I answered him. And uh, that probably was not the best thing in the world to do. I didn't get fired, but that changed everything. Didn't change my assignment, but it was evident that you know I had really, really roiled the waters. And so uh, my feeling is that if you're good enough, that might happen to you anyway. Uh, it's probably just a, an ego-saving device for me, but that's why I left.
McDonald's. Someone else had a question. Quick question from your friend, and then we're going to have to wrap up. Okay. That's a really good question, Stan, and the answer is it doesn't. Uh, the other thing I would just say to you, since you guys communicate so much today, and of course I do too, um, by computer, you really need to be a good writer. You know, answering sometimes email, yes and okay, is not the way to make friends. Uh, so I don't think you have to give up any rapport. I think it just means that you probably have to find some additional times to reach out to those people and try to engage them. We have a different form of friendship now, different channels of friendship.